Welcome to OpAmp Stability Basics Part 4. After completing this course, the learner will be able to learn how to use the log scale trick to find exact frequencies on the log frequency x axis, understand how the typical datasheet AOL curve can change with process and temperature variations, recognize many OpAmp circuits as dominant second order systems, use AC closed loop gain peaking of a second order OpAmp system. To predict loop gain phase margin. Use transient closed loop step response of a second order op amp system to predict loop gain phase margin. Learn the test conditions acceptable for a transient forward step stability test. Understand how to conduct a transient output load step stability test. Recognize that for correlation to real world PCB circuits, one must trust but verify any op amp spice macro model against the datasheet for AOL and either ZO or Z out when it involves a stability analysis. For more exact locations of poles or zeros on a frequency log scale plot, we can use this log scale trick. It is based upon scaled measurements within a decade of a given frequency range. For our example here, we see a decade in frequency from FB equals 10 Hertz to FE equals 100 Hertz, which measures D equals 2 centimeters. The exact location of FB is determined by measuring its distance L, which equals 1 cm from the start of the frequency decade, FB, which equals 10 Hz. FPX, the location of FP relative to a 1 to 10 Hz decade, is shown to be 3.16. We know FP equals FPX times FB, which equals 3.16 Hz times 10, which equals 31.6 Hz. There is no data sheet known for an op amp that shows AOL frequency tolerance with process and temperature variations. If a typical op amp circuit is stabilized using typical curves, it may become unstable or marginally stable due to process and temperature variations. Here we establish a worst case design guide for AOL frequency variation with process and temperature. We will assume that the dominant compensation capacitor that sets the AOL frequency pole, FP, varies by plus or minus 20% over process and temperature. We will assume a transconductance variation of plus or minus 15% over process and temperature, and that it directly affects FP. Finally, we will assume external component tolerances of plus or minus 15% and lump them into the AOL frequency shift effects at FP. Our total AOL FP frequency shift, as read from the typical data sheet, will now be plus or minus 50%, or between the range of 0.5 times FB and 1.5 times FB. When we want to stabilize op amp circuits for robust designs across variations in process and temperature, we utilize 1 over beta and loaded AOL curves. However, it's important to consider that the typical AOL or open loop gain value given in the data sheet can fluctuate by plus or minus 50% to the low frequency pole. Many op amp circuits are dominant two pole systems. There are well-documented control system equations and curves for closed-loop AC and transient responses for a two-pole dominant system. These closed-loop responses will indicate the loop gain stability phase margin, and thus the overall stability of the circuit. Shown here is a typical two-pole AOL with a closed-loop gain of 2. The circuit's behavior will reflect that of a dominant two-pole system. A second-order closed-loop control system is shown here. There are well-known closed-loop behaviors of a dominant two-pole or second-order system. The loop gain phase can be determined by closed-loop testing in the time domain, using percent overshoot for a step input. The loop gain phase can also be determined by closed-loop testing in the frequency domain, using AC gain peaking. The damping ratio connects both tests to loop gain phase margin. Many op-amp circuits are dominated by two poles in the loop gain. The closed loop tests we will show are easier to use in the real world, in lieu of open loop testing needed for loop gain plots. A typical AC closed loop gain test circuit is shown here. We see for this op amp, op 07, with a capacitive load of CL equals 1 nanofarad, the gain peaking, relative to the low frequency flat part of the gain, is 3.12 dB. The math on the cursors is cursor 2 over cursor 1 or in dB we see 0 dB minus 3.12 dB, which equals minus 3.12 dB. This measurement will be used on a phase margin versus gain peaking plot to determine the loop gain phase margin. Here is the handy phase margin versus gain peaking plot 
for a dominant two-pole system. From our previous example, we saw gain peaking equals 3.12 bb, which we read off the plot as 41 degrees of phase margin. A typical closed-loop small signal transient test circuit is shown here. We see for this op-amp, op-07, with a capacitive load, CL equals 1 nanofarad. The overshoot magnitude on the output, delta V out, is 10.722 millivolts. The percent overshoot is computed using delta V out and the complete output step magnitude, V out peak to peak of 50 millivolts. Percent overshoot is then delta V out divided by V out peak to peak times 100, which equals 21.44%. This measurement will be used on a phase margin versus percent overshoot plot to determine the loop gain phase margin. Here is the handy phase margin versus percent overshoot plot for a dominant two-pole system. From our previous example, we saw percent overshoot equals 21.44%, which we read off the plot as 46 degrees of phase margin. The amount of overshoot and ringing to a transient forward step stability test on a closed loop op amp circuit is an indication of the stability of the circuit. A square wave much less than FCL, where loop gain goes to zero is used. One kilohertz is a nice design standard that will trigger easily on an oscilloscope. Adjust the amplitude for a 50 millivolt peak to peak output voltage, which is not enough to put any op amp into slew rate, regardless of gain settings. Use a DC offset adjust source to conduct the test at various DC operating points for a complete check. Worst case for capacitive loads is when the DC output current is close to zero, causing the largest value of ZO. For a dual supply, assuming the load is connected to ground, the largest value of ZO is near V out equals zero volts. Once the time domain waveform looks correct, switch to AC coupling and zoom in on the rising and falling edges of V out to look for overshoot and ringing. Use a times one scope probe on V out for best resolution. For capacitive loads, a load transient test is a good closed loop check for op amp stability. This test disturbs the output with a current square wave with fast rise and fall times to show the damped natural response of the circuit to a load transient. No excessive overshoot or ringing is a good indicator of stability, as measured at the output of the op amp VOA. Check simulation results against data sheet parameters for ISC and V out versus I out specifications. Op-amp stability analysis simulations must use macro models whose AOL matches the datasheet. For any op-amp macro model, trust but verify that the AOL is correct when compared to the datasheet using this test circuit. A DC inductor LT is a short and capacitor CT is an open, so check the DC operating point with a dot op simulation that the inputs and output of the op-amp are in the linear operating region. For AC, Capacitor CT is a short and inductor LT is an open, so the op amp AOL is measured as VOA. Include R1, or whatever other load is the output of the op amp, from the datasheet test conditions for AOL. For LT SPICE, ensure dot options G farad equals zero is used to eliminate any DC current in capacitor CT, which would give an incorrect DC operating point. Op amp stability analysis simulations must use macro models whose Z out matches the datasheet. Either ZO or Z out should be given. For any op amp macro model, trust but verify that the Z out is correct when compared to the datasheet using this test circuit. I1 is set for 0 amp TC and 1 amp AC. The ratio of 1 plus RF over RI, or the noise gain of the op amp, is adjusted for AV equals 1, AV equals 10 and AV equals 100. Z out is read directly as VOA. If the Y axis is Z out in dB, convert to logarithmic for Z out in ohms. Op amp stability analysis simulations must use macro models whose ZO matches the datasheet. Either ZO or Z out should be given. For any op amp macro model, trust but verify that the ZO is correct when compared to the datasheet using this test circuit. I1 is set for 0 amps TC and 1 amp AC. A DC inductor LT is a short and capacitor CT is an open. One can check the DC operating point with a dot op simulation to ensure the inputs and output of the op amp are in the linear operating region. For AC, capacitor CT is a short and inductor LT is an open. 
so the op-amp CO is measured as VOA. If the y-axis is ZO in dB, convert to logarithmic for ZO in ohms. For LT-SPICE, ensure dot options G farad equals zero is used to eliminate any DC current in capacitor CT, which would give an incorrect DC operating point.